what a day. What a day. It's been, oh God. What a week. What? No, this whole month has sucked. Okay, now it's the month. <laughs> this year, forget it. This year. Well, it's only the, what is it, the seventh or eighth or something like that. So when we say that this month has sucked, it's pretty much this last. <laughs> it's a week. <laughs> like that high school drama club thing going on. Like it was like being stuck in the middle of a bunch of fucking cheerleaders bitching about who's going to be the lead cheerleader. Have you ever had that, that experience? Oh yeah. I've had that experience lots of times, usually in office settings. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I guess, I guess I could have went that route too, but uh, I just, this last week, it started last weekend as you know, um, Mm. it started last weekend and the whole thing was just absolutely absurd but that wasn't the only one that that's this is really what kind of killed me so after after the um, the um, uh the meltdown i'll call it the the infamous meltdown um because everything seems to be infamous nowadays (laughs) after after the infamous meltdown um i i i put that aside and i was gonna move on and then there was another meltdown in another organization that I'm a member of. Oh, really? and it, yeah. And it's funny because they're both media uh, related. They're both, you know what I mean? Uh, so, yeah. So it, it, there's a lot of things that have kind of come out of that. Uh, some things not so good. Some things maybe going to be better, but uh, all in all uh, it's, it's been such a, just a crazy week. Crazy well, I guess, week. you know, actors and actresses and all that stuff, I guess that. Actors, actresses, wannabe <laughs> radio hosts, things like that. <laughs> you know, it's, just, you know, it's crazy. It's really crazy because you get these people. We, we put a microphone in front of them and all of a sudden they become Imus or, or Howard Stern or they, they, they believe that the words that are coming out of their mouth carry more weight than they actually do. Mm. Now, you and I are both on the same page when it comes to the words that are coming out of our mouths. We're sharing it. How they, mm-hmm. how people perceive that and how they take that, that's up to them. Yeah. But we don't totally. put any more, uh, oh, what's the word? I'm a celebrity on our status than what there really is. And we're realists when it comes to that crap. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, and like anything else, too, I mean, uh, uh, like, uh, and you're right, it is totally up on how people take it. And I, uh, I will, you know, you and I will also be the first to say that sometimes we don't always take shit well, either. I mean, we're human, like, sometimes we'll take something or we'll assume something or whatever. But yeah, it's then when you come around and go, okay, well, I, you know, I assumed that. So one of the four agreements that we just did a show on not that long ago. Yeah, yeah. I did not do well in the don't make assumptions category. And, right. you know, and but, then you own it and you go, yeah, but I assumed. To your, defense, to your defense, I thought you had, I thought it was warranted. And uh, it, the, whole, the whole thing kind of went way out, be, far beyond what it should have ever gone in the first place. Oh however, yeah. However, oh, well, yeah. It's it's one of those things that when they happen, you can do one of two things. You you can sit there and bitch, cry, and complain like is being done on side A, or you can just move the fuck on, which is being done on side B. Yeah. And since we have a platform, I figured, yeah, why not talk? Let's let's talk about it. let's let's figure out what happened, but yeah, it, that yeah, even shit happens. That talk it definitely didn't go well either. <laughs> what? I said that talk didn't even really go all that well either. Well, things can only go as well as they can go, right? Like, sure. so I would like to take a second to welcome Larry Carter to the to the show. This is the first time he's been to the show. Yeah, I don't but recognize that name, Larry really? Carter. However, Larry is um, engaged to my sister, Stacy. Oh, cool. Well, I don't know if that's how you would put it Good. yet. Congrats. Um, he's, but uh, he's, he's a cool guy. I really like him. I, I met him for the first time right before my daughter's graduation. And um, he's, he's a solid, upstanding dude. So welcome to the show. 
And, so it's uh, good to have good people in the family. Yeah, and stick around to the to the last part of the show, to the hot topic. You're going to want to stick around for that because tonight's hot topic, we're flipping the script a little bit. Usually yeah. when we talk about sex and relationships, we're talking about women and their needs and, and things to kind of work their, um, heat them up, if you will. Mm-hmm. But tonight we're going to flip it around a little bit. We're going to talk we're putting about it on the women. Put it on the women. We're we're gonna switch roles because you know, like we say, we don't think that anybody should have any roles, mm-hmm. and uh, we're gonna just we're just gonna have some fun with this and see where this goes. Yeah, and this goes, you know, this goes any which way. This is not just like you know, men and women relationships. I mean, because there could be some people watching saying, "Well, you know, I'm not heterosexual," but this could go for anything. But generally, um. You know, it's always about women and what pleases them and all that. So, yeah, we're flipping it around and saying, hey, ladies, like, take the time. So that's coming up later on. We're going to talk about that. And uh, shoot, I had something in my head I was going to say, and it just went right out of my head. See, that's how this week has been. But you know what? I read something that the new moon or something was in Aries this week or something. So let's blame it on that. It's got us totally discombobulated. That's for damn sure. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, this week, is, we're only like the first week into a month, and it seems like it's been going on a lot longer than that, doesn't it? You know, and I knew, I felt it coming. I felt it coming. When when we had our last show, it, we discussed that. Uh, the end of last month didn't wasn't really, feel, it didn't feel the vibe last month. Yeah. It wasn't really feeling right. And then we discussed how I watched the whole uh horoscope thing oh, yeah. um june i will say that uh it's been nothing but a horrible scope it has been absolutely just horrible terrible yeah so you know what i've switched up to like watching for numbers now do the numbers thing so numbers. watching for number patterns so you know the other night i woke up and i wonder about so i'm learning about number patterns you know how everybody goes oh 11 11 make a wish yeah right yeah, or it's 12 12 or or 20, smoke a bowl, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, not quite not quite oh, no, that no. number. Not those numbers? Oh, okay. My bad. Not that number, no. <laughs> but so the other night, so I'm reading more about this and I watch some um some intuitives and psychics online that do lives and stuff, and some people that I know that, you know, read cards and things like that. So I'm learning more about that. And uh, so the other night, this is really odd. I wake up and this has never, ever happened to me ever. I wake up all of a sudden in the middle of the night and it's 3.33. I'm like, oh, wow, isn't that cool? Okay, 3.33. I notice it's a number pattern. It's the morning hour. Yeah. (laughs) And so, you know, get up, go to the bathroom, come back to bed. And then later on, I wake up again. Bang. I just wake up. I was having a really intense dream. Don't remember what it was. Damn, I hate that. I wake up and it's 5.55. I'm like, wow. Like, number of patterns like that twice. 5.55, 3.33, 5.55. I'm like, whoa, that's never happened. Twice in one night. So I looked them up to see. Okay. It's very interesting. So, so, so forget the horoscope thing. Just get into the number thing. Start paying attention to number patterns. And then you can look at the different things. Like, um, So I think like 333. Well, there's a lot of meanings. But the one that I can sort of remember from the 333 is that there is whatever it is that you're thinking of at the time. I think this is right. I think. I can't remember because it was a lot to it and I, it was a couple days ago, but, and, th- and there is a lot to it. It was something about, there is something going on and there is a message that your guides are trying to reinforce of what it is that's going on with you at the time that you're thinking about and they are reinforcing and that is saying, yes, we're confirming what it is actually it is that you're thinking about. 555 is, um, Oh, what was it again? 555, because I only looked it up once. 555 was, I think, your spirit guides want to talk to you or have a message for you, so you need to pay attention more. Yeah, that's uh, pay attention (laughs) to, you know, the dreams that you're having, because the dreams that you're having must have been absolutely pretty amazing. And I can't Um, remember. I hate that when I can't remember. 
I would really, we should, I think maybe we should dive into this a little bit more. I, you, okay. I'm not woo woo. I'm not being woo woo numbers or anything like that. You're I'm getting not, a little more woo woo though. I, I have been, well, we've been, we've said this since the beginning. I'm kind of one of those, uh, those guys that if I don't understand it, I'm not going to be that guy that just says, you know what? I don't get it. I don't like it. Change is not going to happen. Yeah, you're open-minded. I will be open-minded enough to at least experiment with whatever it is. Almost everything. We'll discuss that later. But uh, when it comes to the numbers and stuff like that, I wouldn't mind checking more into this. I, w- I would like to know oh. more about what it is that uh, what you're talking about. Yeah, it's so interesting. Okay, so here, 333, align mind, body, and soul. Three is the trinity number, mind, body, and soul. The appearance of 333 could be a confirmation that you're hitting it on all three levels and really in the zone. And I have really been focusing on that lately, actually. Um, It's really, really uh, interesting. Yeah, the Lotto Max is at 60 million. I know, and I, oh, damn, I forgot to buy a ticket. Shit, damn. Well, you just saved yourself uh, from having to pay the stupid tax. Good, good for you. We don't pay taxes on lotto winnings. No, it's not what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. The stupid tax. Okay, so Dave Ramsey calls it the stupid tax when you play, play the lottery because oh, okay. you give two dollars, four dollars, ten dollars, whatever it is, you give it to the state or whatever. You oh, call okay, it. yeah. And when you don't win, well, you just donated to that next winner, so it's the stupid yeah, tax. Yeah. Yeah. So I like Alin just a message. Yeah. Five, five, five is a message from your angels. Yes. That it's time to let go of the old. That is no. Yes, exactly. That's what it was. That's exactly what I found out. Mm -hmm. So that's been going a lot on. That's been very prevalent in my life lately, too. So when I read that, it was like, oh, so the number thing is very interesting. So in other words, you're hitting on all cylinders and it's time to ditch the dead weight. Yeah, basically. (laughs) That's the way we got to look at this here. Yeah. I just hope I'm not the dead weight. Let's keep. <laughs> no, absolutely not. No. Would- so, yeah, it, you know, very. Yeah, very interesting. So I've been going towards the the whole number thing. And then you see number patterns like out, like when you're driving and how you see. It's very interesting how you see them come up in license plates and Oh, it's very interesting. Just start noticing things like that. And it's and what your thoughts are at the time. And it's very interesting. So that is my suggestion. Get into the number thing. Like, let's look at that. Yeah, well, my, we'll look at the number thing for sure. The most interesting thing on our license plate is my wife's license plate number is like 006. My daughter's is 007 and mine is 001. Really? Yep. <laughs> wow. What are the chances of that? Did you? plan pretty that? good when y'all go in at the same time on the same day <laughs> for the same lady <laughs> but no we didn't plan it that way uh that was just that was just something that kind of weird that happened that was kind of funny but, wow uh, was, that is weird you didn't insist on the 007 one no no you don't get to only way you can do that is if you actually you know get like a vanity plate well we don't have vanity plates i'm not going to spend the extra 60 I know. Bucks, you know some idiotic thing printed on my license plate unless i had a really good website that was really short that would fit like you know something.com yeah yeah like like, no that'd be like putting grt and grce or some shit like that it just wouldn't happen no so anyways uh, right. But yeah, I, the numbers numbers are interesting. Numbers have always uh, fascinated me. Not just not just because of woo woo this or the other. It regardless of all that stuff, numbers have always fascinated me. Well, uh, because I, when I was a kid, my mom used to have this uh, archaic computer. It didn't have its own monitor. You actually hooked it up to the television, oh. and there's a game cartridge that you plugged into it. It was called biorhythms. So you would really? you'd plug in your date of birth and all this stuff. You'd hit enter and all of a sudden it'd make this god awful sound. And next thing you know, it, it would have your biorhythm wave and your numbers and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. I I was always fascinated by those numbers and, and try you know, figuring out what those meant. Mm-hmm. And so 
when I say I don't get into the whole woo woo thing, and it's maybe six one way, half a dozen the other sometimes because of the fact that when it comes to bio rhythms, there I I've noticed there are certain times of the month and certain times of the year where I feel like I'm on top of my game, nothing can go wrong, everything is clicking, and then you know, you start you get to that one point where nothing's going right, everything is wrong, every decision you make is just it's challenged every yeah. decision is challenged even though they're the right decisions you've been making these same decisions but now they're being challenged and it's and it's, it's all about those biorhythms so i think uh, i definitely believe we should uh, we should research more and we should do more on these numbers well we yeah we could do a number on that a show on that i mean do a number on that <laughs> we'll do a number on that <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> Let's do some 420, girl. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's very interesting the more I get into it because I have a lot of um, people that I know and that do work with that. And it, it is very, very interesting. And, you know, it, basically them saying, look, numbers, science is based in numbers. And numbers don't lie. And that, um, you know, these are angels or whatever it is are – try to communicate and obviously can't communicate the way we can communicate. So they communicate in, you know, symbolism and messages and, and numbers are the big way that they do it. But I just, I have not forgotten that. And I won't forget that. And I'm going to go back to it some more because I've never had that happen that I wake up at three 33 and five 55. I've never. I, see, I don't agree with the whole one angel. night. I don't agree with the whole angel thing because I believe if they wanted to communicate with you, they'd be like, Hey, yo, CJ, let's go have a beer. I got to, I got to talk to you. You've well, they do. If you regularly talk to them, <laughs> they would talk to, they would talk like that to you because the people that I know that do communicate with the other side and angels on that, they say that is the way they talk. They sound like a pissed off Brooklyner. They sound just like regular, like regular people. But, nice. but we don't, we're not open to hearing that for whatever reason. We're not all, although we're all capable of it. Um, they yeah, say we're absolutely that. all are. So that's how they communicate with a lot of people. That's a way to start that, you know, especially the number 33, look out for the number 33 a lot. That is a direct but anyway, we're not going to get into that, but we're going to do, we could do a show on that. But anyway, because you brought up the whole horoscope thing. See, we I went on know, that tangent, yeah, but get off the horoscope thing and look at numbers. It's really interesting. We'll have to do that. We'll, we'll definitely have to do that. Now, folks, I want to tell you, we are still going to be getting into our his and her segment coming up in just a little bit. Uh, we love to start the show off by just kind of letting things fly, letting things flow a little bit, seeing where you guys are at, seeing where we're at. And uh, Freemasons, 33rd level, there you go. Yes, Dave is all into the uh, numerology, understands the numerology of there. But uh, like I was saying, we like to get things flowing a little bit, get the blood flowing, kind of like stretching before going for a run. And um, Who yeah. the fuck runs? Why do people run? I don't understand that. <laughs> I have no fucking clue. That was That is the dumbest thing. Anybody, our bodies, if you look at the way our bodies are designed, we are not designed to even walk, let alone run. Really? And yeah, no, get this. The way our bodies are designed, there are so many things going on neurologically and, and muscular, muscular. God damn, the word that is not coming out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, but, uh, it's been a rough week. Yes, it has. Anyways. I know what you mean, though. Yeah, so between the brain and the muscles, there are so many things that happen. And when you think about reaction time, what it takes to actually react to somebody. If someone was to like throw a ball at you from three feet away, it would literally, it would be within six inches of your face before you were able to recognize the threat and stop the threat. Right. That's an image. That makes a, me laugh. That's, a baseball. that's a threat. I'm sorry, but that's the way I see it. So you think about that when you walk, you're actually, all you're doing is you're reacting to the fact that you're falling down. So it's just a series of controlled <laughs> falls. That's all walking is. And now let's speed that up. We're going to speed that up just a little bit, just a fraction. Because, well, you know, I've put on, a, well, I'm carrying around about 50 extra pounds. So when I control fall and I'm trying to do that in a rapid pace called running. Running. <laughs> 
that shit don't work really well. And uh, whoever came up with that whole concept, oh. if there is a freaking saber tooth tiger behind you, stop that shit. Just don't Ugh. do it. Don't do I it. I know. Not I just- don't get it. Like, I don't, I don't understand. And then people choose to do it like in the rain and shit. I don't, I don't know. Oh, anyway. Run. You want to go for a run? Hell no. No. <laughs> my daughter's picked up running, but she's going to go into the military so oh, the, and they make you run running. So yeah, she she started running. She's gonna go in the military. That's yeah. new. No, it's not. She's been saying oh. this for like two years. Three I years. never knew that. Yes. Yeah, no, Good not my her. oldest daughter. My youngest daughter. My youngest daughter is gonna go into the military, but I'm hoping to steer her in the w- the way of the OCS, you know, officer candidate school, so she can go to school, become a doctor through the military all that kind of good stuff so is her path and i'm gonna hold her to that one because there's no way in shape or form am i going to uh, stand there and watch her go through the enlisted side of things and get uh get used up and abused the way uh i did yeah um is there crickets where you are yes there are crickets god damn it wow could i ever hear them i'm like oh "Oh, man there's like loud as hell I keep talk, I keep kicking the damn things. So I'm like, shut up, god damn it! But no, uh, seriously. Yeah, no, seriously. There's oh. freaking tickets down here in my studio. Uh, my door opened up the other day to my studio, and I came in, and there's literally glass all over. The wind had blown. Uh, I had some glass bottles on my shelf. Wind had beer bottles. Up. Yeah. Uh, and I, I'm a fucking pig. I, I'll admit it. My, my, if you saw my studio right now, you'd be like, "Oh, holy shit!" I CJ, be- get it together. Come on. I know. I don't know. But, so anyway. Uh, no. Anyhow, yeah. Crickets got in. Crickets got in, and uh, they like the show apparently, or not like the show, whatever it is. But it sounds nice. Does no, it annoy you? Yes, it annoys me. When I hear crickets, I'm thinking empty audience. Nobody there. Oh, <laughs> and I've got it in the background the entire time we're here. So please, I keep, please I keep thinking, it. wow, I wonder if that's the mic or is it like crickets? No, it's actually crickets. Oh, <laughs> real freaking crickets. So, anyways, so like I said, folks, we just like to kind of get the juices flowing, we like to loosen up a little bit. And coming up next is the his and hers segment. And since I went first last time, I'm going to throw it over to Lynn. It's your turn to go first. Because I always have a hard time deciding what I want to talk about because there's so many things I could talk about. But I'm going to talk about what's been going on. And you never and you have not been understanding what I've been talking about because all your comments on my post in the last couple of days have been, what are you talking about? I don't understand what you mean. They're pretty vague. (laughs) When you pull something like, oh, not God, for the people know. that are in the know, CJ, come on. But see, that's the thing. That's the thing. When when there's only like a handful of people in the know, keep it in the know zone. You well, don't that. put it out to the public. Well, and, then you need to catch up. And, and, and you were just sitting here like, what the fuck is she talking about? And it's so vague. I want to read you guys this this comment <laughs> before she gets into this. Because I want to get your, I want to get your take on this as well, Alain. You don't count though, because I know you're in the know, and so I don't want you spoiling this for all the other folks here. So let me see, where's it at? Go to Lynn. Okay, so this post, I, well, as soon as I saw it, I was like, "What the hell is she talking about?" So it says, uh, "Sorry, I'm calling BS on this one too." Especially with the Weinstein connection. On which one? Uh, You didn't read. That's my second one. The other one, the first one, you didn't understand either. No. Okay. And so, no, that's not it. That's about your son's wisdom teeth. I can't find the other one. Oh, yeah. And he looks like a chipmunk today. Holy shit. You have to go back a little more. So the, the tied to the closet door, that one I was kind of confused about at first. Then my wife explained it to me. So now I get it. Okay. Uh, That's good. You're, you're a little bit off on that. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> what am I? Oh, what do you mean? What am I off? Huh? 
What do you mean? I'm a little off. What are you talking about? What do you mean? In I, what? Said it was a little, it, I said it was a little off on that one. The whole tied to a closet door. A closet door. I do not believe for one minute she took her own life. Neither did uh, uh, David Carradine then. Um, let me see. I just find it odd. It's not a normal thing. I know no. it's possible. I just find it odd. So then my other one today. Were you talking about Anthony Bourdain? Yes. Okay. F say that then. <laughs> well, I th it's all over the freaking place. I didn't think I'd need to say that. Oh, yeah. No, I don't get that kind of stuff. I don't watch TV, so I don't get the news. I don't, I don't either. And it's all over Facebook. I didn't see anything like that on Facebook. It was Holy so shit. Really? That's all I saw. I thought I have to get off. I have to get off Facebook because that's all I saw. Because I, well, like I said in my post, I call BS. I call BS that these two people took their own life. That is my his and hers. I'm putting it out there. I call BS. I don't believe it. Who's the second person? Or is that from the... He's the second person. Oh, he's the second person. Okay, so gotcha. The first one was Kate Spade. And even yeah. that, I, right away, when I heard that, I thought, mm, I that I don't think so. I don't I don't buy it. I don't buy it. And, uh, and then this morning, um, you know, I get, you know, Bobby's like, hey, did you hear the news? Like, right away. And uh, what? What news? He's like, Anthony Bourdain committed suicide. I went, bullshit bullshit and i and you know i'm not surprised that there was another one because that's how it comes about that's how it comes about um chester bennington and and what's his face chester bennington and the I other music no, yeah, the other no. musician yeah, they went no. close together too and that's I, I just and there's i just I, think it's kind of crazy because i didn't know first of all i didn't know who kate spade was uh, so my wife had to tell me who she was and then so we're laying in bed yeah then we're then we're laying in bed and uh Corinne says who's anthony bernine <laughs> so i had to <laughs> <come to her. laughs> see there you go that's what relationships are about that's right what, that's what it's all about right there that's right uh, but, you know, I, I did not see either of those announcements on facebook i i just didn't but i mean it's terrible that these things are happening but I did notice a lot of people today um, saying something to uh, to the effect of suicide, whatever. I mean, their own. They never said who it was that had committed suicide. They just said, yeah, you know, they were just basically giving their opinions of suicide. There's some that were really uh, short sighted and ignorant. Mm -hmm. and there were some well, like that anything. Were, and then, of course, then you have the ones who are very. Uh, full sighted, you know, the people who have lived through a suicide and who are still coming, you know, struggling with their own feelings about what happened in their own family or uh -huh. to, or from a friend or something like that. So it, it, it kind of stretches both sides, really. But we're, we're seeming to have a problem with the middle. And I think the middle is where we're finding the people, uh, you know, that just don't get it so they it's just missing and they're the ones that are doing this well i think like anything there's you know there's different it, it like anything everybody has their own opinion about yeah. it right at based on personal experience or what they think or what they've been told and so again yeah it's one of those where you have people saying oh that's a cowardly thing that's um um, that's a selfish thing. And I always thought cowardly, I think, Oh God, if I, I think it takes a lot of balls to like off yourself. I mean, I, I don't know. I have no experience with that. I've never been to that point. Um, I, I've, I don't, I, I knew somebody way back in college, but didn't really know them, um, that had hung themselves. Um, I had met him twice maybe I didn't know him very well that's as close as my experience so I don't have a lot of experience with that so I can't say I can't make any kind of I think it's awful for the people behind I think it's awful for the people that feel that that is their only option that they see no hope because I think it's beyond just depression I think it's a complete uh, lack of hope <laughs> in all forms 
and so, but I mean, I'm not, I, I'm not a counselor. I can't, I don't work with that. I have no experience on that. So I can't, I can't speak to it. I just think it's awful, awful. Well, no one deserves a- to be, you know, the world doesn't, the world isn't better off with, a, with nobody, without, with anybody missing in it, really. Well, having attempted suicide myself with when uh, I was early in the PTSD stages and trying to figure out what the hell's direction was up, um, it wasn't even a lack of hope because there's there was a lot of hope. It was dealing for for me personally. I can't speak to anybody else because everybody's got their own unique experience. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? But for me, it was closing my eyes and seeing and uh, just closing my eyes and, and going through the memories of the things that I'd seen and done and being able to live with myself. You know, it, it's, it's not a nece- It's like I said, it's not about losing hope. It's not about not having hope. It's about whether or not you can reconcile what you've done to put you to, to get you to that point. Um, for me, it was the fact of, of literally shooting and killing a 12 year old little boy. Mm. Um, you, you just don't know. You, you really don't know uh, what it is that's going to trigger that emotion that gets you to that point. So like I said, that's, and that's just speaking from my experience and there's thousands of people out there that go through this. I mean, in the veteran community, we, we go through 22 suicides a day and there's big movements to try to help these people get the help they need. Uh, the VA has got a great program, but it takes, you know, I, I seen a post where it says that where they said that does really given a one 800 suicide prevention number to people really, is it really helping? Does it? I, I see. And I don't know. I don't know if it really helps or not. Oh, yeah, I wondered that I didn't really, but then not have ever having been in that mindset of whatever it is that brings that about. Um, I don't know. I don't, I think that, um, I, I would imagine that whatever people are feeling, whatever it is, whatever brings them to that, that idea, that, uh, that thought of ending their life, that I don't think they don't know though, where to get help if they needed it or how to find it if they needed it. Well, that's the thing is when, when you're at that point, you just don't want help. You really don't. It's. And there's some people that can hide it. You know, they say, and then the other thing was, you know, check up on people, even the strong people check up on people. Well, I spoken to some that have said, yeah. And then they, they, people will say, I'm fine. I'm good. So what are you going to do? 20 question them? Are you really, are you really, are you really good? Are you thinking about killing yourself? You know, so like that's a tough thing. That's a tough, tough thing. And I, I, I think that if anyone ever contacted me, which, and we're having a rough time, or I thought someone was having a rough time, I would just, I think the only thing I could do, and, and maybe the helpful thing is to just let people know that I'm there, give them a call. Hey, how's it going? Um, you want some company? Like, I'll come over, you know, or you want to come over for coffee or you, you know, like, yeah. Sometimes just knowing or some having somebody there. But again, I don't have experience with that. So, but I don't believe that these people took their lives. I just don't. I just don't. And I just think there's way too many coincidences. Um, there's just way too many coincidences. And like I said before, so Chris Cornell and Chester Bennington, that that had happened and there was close... Uh, so close together. This seems to happen close together. When this happened with Kate Spade a couple days ago, I thought, oh man, hmm, I wonder, I wonder. And sure mm-hmm. enough. But then again, it does this go back to, well, when there's a blue car or when you buy a blue car, all of a sudden you all you only see blue cars. Well, I, th- I think this is a little <laughs> bit of an extreme situation. <laughs> Yeah, but it, we had to get it laughing again because that it, it is a dark topic, and I get it. And you know, people asking, "Hey, please don't." Uh, when are we getting to the good stuff? You know, yeah, like that. but but this so, is my topic. This is my time. This was my choice. This is the hers topic. So but this wasn't about 
suicide. It was about, I don't believe that these people took their lives. And I think, and yeah. so I don't know. I'm just saying, and I'm not a big conspiracy theorist person, but I've just been like looking at a bit more stuff and I'm just, there's way too many coincidences in this world. And when I learned that, I think it was Chester Bennington, I don't know, maybe it was Chris Cornell. One of them apparently was quite beat up that was found through the, uh, the, um, the autopsy report had some broken ribs and bruises and I think a concussion. You don't get that stuff from, uh, from hanging. No, you, you really don't. But then at the same time, maybe he got his ass kicked and yeah, you know, that's a different story though. It's things like that. I don't know, there's uh, some weird shit, but there's, I don't know. There's just some weird things going on out there. That, that seems weird. That one seems weird. This whole thing with Anthony Bourdain, I don't know anything about it. I just found out about it literally like 20 minutes before we came out here. Um, Kate Spade, I don't know a whole lot about that either. But, the, you know, the thing is, you know, that, that it's... I know it's it, weird. Be insinuating circumstances? Absolutely. But is that my job to uh, figure those out? No. Um, there's professionals that do that, and uh, they're yeah. way better than I am on that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to leave it to them. And then yeah. if they if I don't like their answers, then I'll bitch about it. Yeah, but you ain't gonna get the real answers. That's my point. That's my point. <laughs> they keep us in the yeah. dark. I don't know. It's just there's just some weird things out there, and I just just way too many coincidences. Maybe they knew where Jimmy Hoffa was buried, so they had they to, know all that shit. They had, to, they had to quiet them before they let everybody else know. Anthony Bourdain, I I believe he knows who actually killed JFK also. So when he said he was going to come out of the closet and tell that story, they probably had to silence him too. So who knows? Well, I, yeah, I think there is a lot of that stuff. Like there's a lot of that stuff. There's sure. way too many, cons there's way too many coincidences out there. I think that <laughs> entertainment industry and politics, I think they're all way too linked together and all things, stories I've been hearing from people. I don't know. But I'm not gonna like I'm not gonna like totally shut down to that. I mean, I don't know. I think anything is possible. So that's my thing. That was that's my thing. I just I don't buy it. I don't buy it. <laughs> I don't buy it. Man, you conspiracy theorist. Oh yeah, you're not a conspiracy theorist. I am not a sheep, I can say. You're, you're not a conspiracy I'm theorist, and I'm not a woo-woo person. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> that's right oh, okay whatever here we go <laughs> so are going into this, see we uh, talk about anything we talk about anything this is the point of this show anything. and that's since it's our it's since it's our uh our time to give whatever we want that's what we do that's what his and hers is all about we get to share whatever we want and we don't share that with the other person so I had no idea this is what she was going to share. And That's she has right. no idea what I'm about to share. Oh, and I have to say happy 60th birthday to Prince yesterday. My man. Another his birthday yesterday. He should yes, he was him. murdered. That goes along with it, too. Yes, he was. I'll, he I'll definitely actually, was. I'll, I'll go along with that. I, well, the I'll sheriff's look. office even agrees. They're still investigating his death two years later. Well, good. They should. They so really should. That one there, I agree with you. Anyways, here we go. So, have you ever seen you? Do you have Hulu? Do you? No. Or do you watch Netflix or or any of those? I don't watch Netflix. I don't have any. I don't watch any of that. So, what what we noticed after being on Netflix for several years, they are horrible at updating new stuff. You, you very rarely get good new. Content That's what I'm hearing. People are complaining. Me. Right. So we recently switched to Hulu. Because we wanted to get some, but holy crap, it's getting windy out there. Yeah, I was gonna say, what do you got happening there? Uh, <laughs> anyways, Crickets and things are flying. And yeah, it's it's just like the freaking wicked of us, and it is even <laughs> close to Kansas. Um, anyhow, so so Hulu, and I ran across the show, and I sounded like I was in puberty there for just a second. I ran across the show, anyways, either that or a leprechaun. Um, so there's a movie or a show called Behind the Mask, uh, and it's a mascot story. 
So they what they did is they followed these four mascots, a high school kid, a college kid, a semi-pro uh, semi pro team mascot, and a professional pro team mask, mascot. And throughout the, sh- the series, you know, they each have their own goals and things that they would like to do. And but th- throughout the series, I've really found myself moved by the messages that were being uh, that were being delivered in these movies, uh, uh, each episode. You know, this is like, fiction. No, this is real. This is it's based on real. Movies. Oh, it's a wow. TV show. wow. It's called behind the mask. Huh. And what, what they do is they go through and they follow these four people and they, they split the story up and they make it really interesting by, you know, each of these people, they have their ups, they have their downs and they follow the hero's journey through the season and then, of course, they're following the hero's journey in the episode as well. Well, but the messages that they keep, yeah, every message, you know, it's it's a little bit different. Like, you know, don't give up. You know, always aspire to be better than you were yesterday. You know, they, they, so many amazing messages. And I really didn't realize it until I was watching season two today. As I was going through season two, and I kept getting these, like, emotional outbursts. Like, oh my God, that is so amazing. There's one kid, there's one whole carryover from the first season. And he was the amateur sports uh, mascot. And that because of that carryover, it tied the, you know, tied those messages to, and you kind of, you, you don't, you don't realize how invested in the characters you get until you see the second season and you're like rooting for this guy. You want him to get that job as a pro. You want him to be able to see his son more. You want him to be able. It's all these really cool things that are going on. Mm-hmm. But the reason why I brought that up. Huh. Is, huh? I like that. That's I like that. It's real. Like that sounds interesting. Yeah. And, but the, it, here's the thing. And they, it, these people are mascots. Everybody knows what a mascot is. We've seen them in our schools. We've seen them at, at games. We don't have them in our schools. They, but their job is to inspire people and to make people smile and laugh and have fun, entertain and, just, and-, and forget about the crappiness that yeah. happens throughout, you know, in our daily lives, even if it's just for a brief moment. That's what they give us. They give us that, that few moments where we can, we laugh, we forget about everything else. Yeah. And, then you see the behind the mask, the aspect, uh, the young college, you know, the, the college kid, he almost didn't graduate. He had been in school for seven years as his mascot. And he almost didn't graduate because, you know, he was kind of a crappy student. Great <laughs> mascot, great mascot, but a crappy student. You get credits for being a mascot. I guess, I guess yeah. But uh, he ended up graduating. And uh, it was funny because he was a, in Las Vegas. He was a UNLV Hey Reb mascot. And he was a radio DJ when he wasn't uh, the mascot. You know, his job was he was a radio DJ. So it was kind of interesting. And you huh. really kind of get into these storylines. Yeah. And, once you get sucked into these storylines and you start seeing the messages in all these episodes and then you start tying it all together, it really, it, you're, by the time you get into the second season, you're so invested. Uh, you do, you have these emotional moments and watching that, it made me realize when we look around our, at each other, a lot of times we don't, we don't sit and think about that. We're so in, into ourselves and what, what's going on with us. And we, we go through all these people every single day. We have interactions, whether walking past somebody, a, a smile, or you'll see that they're, you know, furrowed fr- uh, brow, whatever it is. We have these interactions with people. Uh-huh. And these, these people, uh, it could be anything. It, you could do anything. It could be you smiling at them. And I think that's one of the things that we kind of lost the art of. That that art of being able to affect the people around us in a way that's positive, without having to engage necessarily. Because a smile, it's okay, it's an engagement, but it's not a physical engagement. You know, what it's I mean? not a commitment. Right. It's not a yeah commitment. That's a better better way of putting it. Yeah. 
And uh, by watching this show, that's kind of what it kind of. I want to say hi and acknowledge you. I just don't want to talk to you. But at the same time, a smile, even something serious as as small as a smile, can really kind of give that person just a brief moment of just forget about what it is that they're frustrated with or irritated about, and just give them just that little bit of reprieve from that, and that could be just enough to be able to break the cycle. That's going on through the day. So that, yeah. that's my is that's what I was gonna be ta- that's all I wanted to say. Yeah. I love it. I like biographies and things like that where you get the stories of people. So check that show out. It's called Behind the Mask. It's a Hulu original series. If you really want to see something awesome, go check that out. It's a with and with all the crappy programming that we have these days, it's nice to have a feel good piece every now and then. Holy smokes, that just about ripped my damn door off. So, <laughs> There's a party <laughs> happening over there at your place. Really get right out of me. So uh, with that being said, that'll make you hot. Uh, so, Ooh, see, there's some freaky shit going on. I know, right? Uh, so, just like Cobra Kai. Good. Kai. Make you that feel good movie. programming. That was a good show. That was a that really was good. Freaking awesome. It, but it made me rethink on how I felt about the original Karate Kids. I'm starting to think Daniel was the asshole, not totally <laughs> right. What? Oh, yeah. Daniel did the not asshole. like him. It, wasn't, it was not Johnny. It was Johnny, yeah, it was not Johnny. Johnny was the guy that had been going to the school for years, getting Daniel getting bullied up. at home. Oh yeah. Daniel shows up, fucks with his mojo. Of course he's gonna say, "Hey, dude, back the fuck up!" But exactly. no, he goes and has his freaking old grandpa dude kick the shit out of him. Yeah, I know. I was not liking Daniel son watching that. God, I yeah. hope he redeemed himself in this season two. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he's got a good. He's got a wife that, like, you know, tells yeah. him to like, whoa. So, but I liked it. I liked the flashbacks. And so if you haven't watched it, like see it, people see it. You can get it, like watch it, like, binge watch it, cancel it before you have to pay anything on YouTube bread. Like it was so good. It was, I can't wait till season two. Cause you know, there's going to be a season two. Like, I mean, oh, you know, has to be. there has not- to be, you can't end it like that. We're not going to give spoilers, but can't end it like that and not have season two and just go, well, that's it. That was fun. But the flashbacks were awesome. The music. Yeah. But I loved how he was so stuck in the past. All right. Well, we're going to have to get this moving along because uh, shit's starting to go crazy out here. Are you being haunted over there big time? It was something. Uh, we, we've got some severe thunderstorms rolling in uh, here. So, <laughs> I may I not love even that. Have- I know it's great until our power goes out. Oh shit, damn. <laughs> so well, tonight, we better get to the good stuff then let's, as people the are good stuff. Let's get to the saucy stuff. Um so funny because we're not gonna tell you what to do. That's so no, funny. Eh? We just we're not we're not giving away anything. No, no, we don't we don't ever do that. We don't ever give away anything. We give ideas. We give ideas, yes. Things yeah, to go try. Yeah. Yeah, this so, is all about, this is putting it on the women. Yes, we're going to put it on the women a little bit here because I I believe, I I believe that there's an expectation that if the, if, in order for sex to happen, the man has to make the move. That he needs to know the map. Yeah, he's got to know the map. He's got to know the right time, when, when to start, when to back off, whatever. But uh, sometimes, you know, the guy sometimes just doesn't read the right signals uh, or maybe they're really tired. They're just not thinking about looking for signals or maybe he's just got to that point where, you know what, he's sick and tired of being the guy to make the move all the time. It happens. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think that, uh, and this thing, so we're talking about, you know, finding your, finding your man's hotspot. I think that, yeah, there is an expectation on, 
on the men all the time and knowing, you know, or, you know, another word, erogenous zones. But I think too that, I think it would make a difference. So we're kind of putting on the ladies like, hey, do you know those spots for for your man or your partner? I mean, I but I think that we, I think society, I think women always default to, what do you mean hot spots? It's that one spot that men are so simple that way that they don't have all these spots. They're not as complicated as women are that it really is what you got one hot spot and that's the main spot. Like, what are you talking about? But I think it is a lot different. I think that, and we've had done lots of shows on this in terms of, um, there is a lot of emotion tied up for men in this area as well. It's not just, you know, the whole simple wham, bam, thank you, ma'am type thing for men that there is a lot more to it as well for for men that it's just approached differently. And we've talked about that. And you said it perfectly one time, how women have to feel something to go there and men need to go there to, in order to feel something. So we just approach that whole thing of sex differently. We come about it differently. And I think that's what throws people off. So again, I think that's one of those things we expect men to, you know, know the spots, learn the spots and that it's not just all about men and, and their orgasms and all that stuff. So this is why we're putting it on the women that, you know, and this is a challenge. I want to put this out to women too. And I'm going to admit too, I'm going to totally be out there and admit, I've never thought about, never really thought about it. Never really thought that men would have certain spots, you know, like with women at, you know, all different spots, back of the neck or whatever, right? I got, I'm going to admit, I've never thought about there being spots that men are sensitive to. I admit it. So um, I never asked looking looking over the list though. Honestly, I was like, some of these are like, yeah, that's bullshit. Uh, They run, they didn't really have a whole lot to go on. So they're just making shit up. Um, Cause making shit up. (laughs) That was your thought. I love that. That's your thought. Well, yeah, because I'm, I'm sorry, but there's some of these and we'll, we'll we'll go through these we'll go through these here real quick yeah real quick because you know what my thought was what do what you make faces about oh was that thunder yeah <laughs> <It's coming. laughs> you got crickets yeah. and thunder and flapping shit and doors and opening and see this is what see where i'm setting the mood see that's what's happening because everybody Ooh. thinks thunderstorms and lightning storms are romantic so i'm set i'm trying to set the the ambiance here you got a candle there you should like yeah. maybe light a candle i can turn one of my lights off that's about as close as i can get <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but i want to know too for the ladies that are watching and for those that you're watching and in, in, you know in the replay do you know can you say yes oh yes definitely my husband my partner whatever this spot and this spot or this spot for sure like do you know can you name it do you know you know what your partner likes what what turns them on what you know makes gives them goosebumps like do you know spots have you even asked them like i want to put that out to the ladies that are watching have you even thought about it Other than the one main one. Like, come on. There's the crickets. The The crickets, the rain, everything. We got it going on now. Okay. So So now that we got the ambiance, now we got the the mood set. So So number, the first one, um, yeah, that's absolutely, and it's the, I don't even know how to say the words, honestly. I don't. The F spot, though. I've never heard it called that ever. What is the F spot again? The F spot, one one of the erogenous zones on men, the eight male erogenous zones. Yeah. And what is it? I don't remember. <laughs> it's the frenulum. frenulum? Uh, I hope I said that right. It's that little piece right below the head underneath. Oh, the, oh okay. Yeah. I don't know how to pronounce that either. Under- no, here's but the thing about that. That spot right there, that is where the nerve endings have come together from the circumcision. So uncircumcised men don't have this. 
That's right. So, so that's why when I was like, okay, this list is mostly bullshit because not every guy has these things and not every, every woman doesn't, uh, you know, when we're sitting here talking about roadmaps and different spots, not every woman responds the same to this, to the same spots. Well, and exactly. Men, and men are going to be the same way. Everybody um, has their own roadmap. Right. Exactly. And it's the fun is finding that roadmap and experimenting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, in that spot you're talking about right now, I kind of just put it all together in the one main spot. Right. So yeah, if, if we can imagine, I'm just going to use my finger as a demonstration <laughs> here. So if like this is the head part right here, it'd be like right there. So just just a scar it. basically yeah. from the circumcision. Scar, yeah. That and, is your Yeah, <laughs> I'll admit, you know, the right touch right there, boom, ready to rock and roll now. It's, it's not it's not even a question. It's like tickle tickle done. Let's go. Let's I didn't go. even I'm sure your sister really likes knowing this about you. <laughs> well, that's, um, that, that's pretty much that is pretty much any guy who has had a circumcision. Because like I said, all those nerve endings, they're right don't there. Don't imagine that anywhere on that whole area would be a bad thing unless it's like doing painful things. Pro yeah. You're, you're, yeah. Just Go with that. Pretty much any attention there is pretty pretty much a good thing unless there's yeah, like with whatever you got it's you know. <laughs> yeah so we're, that's safe to say that that's like you know yeah I have to say that there's a uh, uh, there's okay just go let's just go through the list and I'll tell you what I think when we get to different ones all right so the soles of his feet was, was the second one oh yeah that one big no. Yeah, absolutely not. Feet are nasty, dirty. No, you know, just they not, are. There's, it, I don't even want to. Like I don't even like mine. It'd be like if you stuck a glove on your hand, like a rubber glove on your hand, and then put, covered it up with a, a leather glove. And you did that every single day. Your hands would smell like your feet. It would. It's just this nasty. The feet only, are just ugly. They, I just don't like them. They're, they're ugly, yes. But honestly, the soles of my feet, you fuck with my feet, and it, it just it's one of those things that pisses me off. It's it doesn't make me laugh. Ha ha. No, yeah, it, it makes me angry. Oh um, wow. My uncles used to terrorize us uh, oh. when we were kids. Hold you and, down? Yeah, and hold you down until you were so pissed off. Yeah. You, you know, streaming tears. Now, when that's your programming. It doesn't matter who's touching your feet. It turns into anger because that's how you've been programmed. Yeah. It's crap. Conditioned yeah. responses and programming. Yeah. So uh, that's what it's all about. So, yeah, soles of feet, not a, not, no. Not yeah, no. Bad. Although I'm not against, like, a great foot rub. I don't have a problem with that. Really? I'm not a big fan of, I'm not, just not, I, I just am not going to give you a foot rub. So, like. Like anybody, like it, like yeah. I ain't doing that. I ain't me and my wife. I mean, I don't, I I don't touch her feet. She don't touch my feet. We're yeah. good with it. It's okay, <laughs> you know. If you want your feet rubbed, I will be more than happy to pay someone else to do it. Yeah, it. I am. Um, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I totally get it. Yeah, I totally get it. Like I just cannot do that. When my mom was in the hospital and she, yeah, needed like to, you know, people need to cut their nails and stuff. Like, thank God for my sister, because I was like, um, I ain't doing that. Like, I'm sorry. Like, no, I don't want to look at, like, no. So I don't get that as being an erogenous zone. But so whatever, gonna, everybody's different. I'm going to save the next one for last. And Okay. I'm going to save that. I don't know what the next one is, so. so. Don't worry about it. I'll I'll get to it then. Okay. The next, This one here, I was like, oh. Uh... I don't know. I don't think so. But, <laughs> I mean, it could be sexy if it's done right, but then you can include all the digits too. And that's the thing. Oh, oh yeah. Well, you know, I can sort of get that depending on what you do. That's what, that's what I'm saying though. It, it can be sexy. Uh, I don't know if it's so much an erogenous zone, but like, I don't know about an erogenous zone, but it can conjure up images. 
Right, exactly. You know, it's a phallic symbol, you know. We should girls, tell people what it what we're talking about. Yeah, and if a girl if a woman's sucking on your thumb is you can kind of put but I can't say just together. Yeah, I think any or if a girl's sucking on her own thumb, you know, kind of giving you or a finger. Yeah, I think yeah. that it I don't think it's just the thumb though. It, it could be pretty much any of the digits. I think so, yeah. Uh, that's nasty. Uh, but any of the fingers, and I can I can see that being a turn on, but not necessarily in the Rajas zone. So yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I was like, what? I never heard of that. I never heard of that. But you know, there's some weird things out there. So you know, who are we, right? Like, yeah, like yeah. the toe, like the yeah, like a Lynn. What a Lynn said. Like people have some weird things right that they like or we think it's weird but it i don't know i'm sorry but you stick a big my big toe in your mouth you're gonna get your ass kicked. <laughs> you're, you're you're need a, you need a shot after yeah you're, you're, i just you're, you're gonna need your face your face will need reconstructive surgery <laughs> i will kick it's just it's not something i want to do it's like a reflex action yeah yeah so the, yeah it's a so weird the, thing I wasn't really ready for this one here. I didn't understand this one either. So I'm actually going to read this whole thing. Okay, um, do it. It's the gluteal fold. And the gluteal fold oh. is the, where the top of his thigh meets his butt. It's a surefire passion point. It's a sensitive area that could be a reason why some people like being spanked. Okay, um, that part I didn't get. No. Like, why? I don't get that as a reason. Okay, so spanking i do understand the whole spanking thing and it's because yeah. of the way the nerve endings fire off you know pain response you know signals but i don't get how it's linked to the gluteal fold i don't either i that's that like that i don't see that um i do know that you have nerve endings in your ass i mean obviously you get a shot it hurts you jump all that kind of stuff yeah but i just i don't think that there's enough nerve endings in in the in that little spot between your thigh and your ass to warrant that being a, in a Rajan zone. I don't know. Maybe it's. Oh yeah. No, I get I, that one. No, I could see if, if, if he's laying down on his stomach naked and say, you've got longer fingernails and you're just kind of rubbing his back and running your fingernails and you hit that spot, it could be a tickly spot and tickling sometimes can you know that that's i think a lot of people um confuse that little ticklish sensation with an erogenous zone um i mean otherwise why the fuck would they put soles of your feet on there uh, so, yeah uh, I think, but i can I think, see that being a, a a spot that would you know make you kind of catch your breath or sort of you know i can see that like from um, a personal point of view, I could see that. But again, right, everybody's different. And I don't know for men. I don't know. You know I, in, uh, to be honest with you, the, and this one wasn't on the list, and I'll tell you about that one after we get to the last one. But uh, there's one that's on, not on the list that if, ladies, if you don't know this, you're really missing out. And, uh, and I'll, get, I'll get to that one. It should have replaced about three. It could have replaced three or four different ones. I on think here. there's lots on the list that weren't on the list that shouldn't have been, that weren't, that should have been. So the next one is the sacrum. The sacrum is a triangular bone located at the base of his spine between his hips. Uh, uh, it's like the very lower back. It's, okay, so, yeah, it's that, it's that triangle spot. I mean, it, but that's... That's a that's pretty much a pretty big erogenous zone on women as well as men. I mean, that's just lower a, back, yeah. With a lot of nerves going into there. That's kind of one of the uh, what's the best way to put it? That's like your, I mean, your brain is your operation center. That's like your network room where all the nerves come Meet. at the base of the spine. So yeah. that one there, I had to agree with. That one is a. Yeah, you know, absolute must. I find a lot of these are very similar between men and women. Yeah, There's just absolutely. no thought put towards like the men. It's kind of like just grip them and go. But yeah, rip, it's not rip. that way. Give her a tug. You'll be all right. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Uh, Net, net. but yeah, lower back. I think that's big. I think that's huge. And yeah, you know, in I'm gonna say something about massages too when it comes to the back, lower back areas and stuff. Um, I think a lot of people really have a hard time with this whole concept of, oh, you gotta massage me. You gotta, you know, give me a massage. Blah blah blah. Um, spend some time learning the difference between a massage and a sensual massage. Very different experiences. Very different technique. Very different pressures. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that is the time when you can you can really hit on some of these things that we're talking about, like like that, uh, 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 like the sacrum and, and different areas that I haven't quite talked about yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next one is uh, the nipples. Um, I don't get it. I don't care for it myself. But I guess some guys, I guess it, it's something that they like. No problem. Go for it. You know, that's something I never thought of, but I think. Well, you got them. Why not? Why is yeah. it just? Why is it just reserved for women? Like, why is it just us? It's why just, wouldn't it be? <laughs> what? I, I don't like it. I don't like people talk, messing with my nipples. It just, I don't like it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so when I seen this on there, I'm like, seriously, guys? Are there There's other- some. Are there some guys out there that like their nipples played with? We don't have the nerve endings in our nipples like women have. We don't. We've only got like it, it was it's something like five percent of the of the nerve endings that women have in their nipples. Really? That's yeah. That's a pretty that's a pretty small a number. So I can't. I couldn't imagine hmm. there being anything similar in in feeling. So. Oh, but there there are though. Yeah. It's interesting, eh? But. But the next one, another good one, <laughs> <laughs> and that's the scrotal wraith. So it's easy to give. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's wrong? Oh, just the way you said that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's easy to give his penis all the love, but don't leave out the balls in the clod. <laughs> In the cold, don't leave the balls out in the cold. The scrotal sack is the, the loose skin. Of course, everybody knows what the hell that is. Yeah, um, yeah. Give it some loving. Yeah, just just give it some loving. Just give it some loving. Don't don't leave it out. Um, See, I but I think it gets left out, doesn't it? It does. It does uh, a lot of a lot of times. It does, and I, I think, think a lot it does. Has to do, I think a lot of that has to do with uh, adolescence. Uh, male adolescent poor grooming habits. Mm. Um, so kind of creates that negative programming. Uh, it turns into something like, oh, yeah, I don't really want to mess with that. And yeah. uh, so it, it gets left out in the cold. But, you know, hey, ladies, guys grow up and they get better grooming habits. So go try well, mo- you hope anyway. <laughs> you hope. And okay, so and that was the that was the last one up. So now I'm gonna go back to the one that. Um, that yeah, you I missed skipped, one. I skipped over one, and that's the. <laughs> the P spot. The P spot. Now I'm sorry, but when I read that at first, I'm like, "Fucking yellow spot in my bed is not <laughs> gonna me off, not turn me on." So. I hate the fact that they call it the police club. However, yeah. however, oh my god, the, the problem we're talking about is the prostate, and everybody has seen and heard about the the male prostate uh, massages and things like that. Um, I've never experienced it. I don't know anything about it. Uh, just what I've seen in the movies, and the closest thing I've ever seen to anything in the movies is usually a comedy so they're making that uh you know they're making it a jest yeah so, i i really don't know what to say about it uh well yeah if you have no experience with it then there's no you don't know what to say apparently i've heard it is just like what you hear like for women in the g spot apparently but i think that that's um 
I don't know. I think that's not something that men tend to want to, you know, that's something that's reserved for when you go to the doctor and you have an exam and you reach that magical age of 50 and they say it's time to start getting tested yeah. for that well, or the yeah. doctor, you know. Well, it, it's important for men to have their prostate examined. That's, that's for sure. I mean, that, it starts swelling up. It could be cancer or whatever. And that kills just as much as uh, just as many men as, as breast cancer kills women. Mm -hmm. oh, it's, it's, yeah. But at the same time, I, I just, I don't know if it's the, you know, we're still at a time and we're at a time still where, where people aren't open to the whole concept of, of, uh, women you know whatever with just jamming a finger up his butt i guess it's it's still looked at as as a way where that's that's the that's the stuff that that gay men do that's not what you know straight heterosexual men do yeah and it's it's taken a long time to get to where we're at now with the acceptance of of gay rights and gay marriage and things like that it's mm -hmm. it's taken a long time to get to this point. And it and it's still, you know, still somewhat of a fight. So, yeah. So I you, I wouldn't do it. Like I wouldn't do it. Yeah, and it's it's just never I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Yeah, it, it's just something that's never come up to me. It's never even met, been a thought in my mind. Hey babe, stick your finger in my ass see if it makes me come. It's not how I want to be able to enjoy myself with my wife. But you don't know, right? It could be like, holy hell, look at what I've been missing out on. But it's not something that I have ever decided I wanted to try. It's not something yeah. I've ever considered. You know, there's there's certain things. Now, I think, I think stuff like that is mainly, I don't know. It, you have your different types. You have your alpha types. You have your... Not so alpha types. I don't want to label those ones because there's so many different types of them. But, yeah. <laughs> but you have your dominant person in the bedroom. And yeah. typically the dominant people aren't the ones that you're seeing. If the man is a dominant person in the bed, you're typically not going to see them, you know, bent over, you know, waiting for the Crisco finger. So I don't know. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, or you could do the whole the the new thing that we which didn't know there was a name for for the po pegging thing. Oh yeah, so <laughs> so was, you know you don't have to use a finger, but yeah, I um I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't do any of that. And <laughs> and when you said that to me, right away I thought like right away I was thinking like peg leg. Right. <laughs> when you said that, like. Right. Yeah, no, no, we weren't talking about uh, amputees. We're talking about pegging women, strapping it on. And, you know, it's funny because I shared a post this week where strap on, the word strap on, when you write it out, is literally no parts spelled backwards. Yeah. I saw and that. I had posted that. And when I posted that, I really honestly did not think about the pegging thing. I had no concept of that i didn't think about it i just like this is funny as hell i'm gonna post this and my wife brought it to my attention and i was like oh holy shit you know so i was like okay so yeah that yeah. Line, no parts. and then the pegging thing now when it came to pegging the only uh the only reference i had was deadpool that was it um the part and i don't know if you've ever seen the movie deadpool but there's well, part. Yeah. yeah well, I've seen a couple little parts. Well, there's a part in the movie where he's, uh, they, there's a string where they're going through different holidays having sex. And uh, there's one of them where I can't remember what the holiday was, but you see him bent over naked and you see her with the strap on. You don't actually see them do that. Yeah. But just you, enough to know close. Up, yeah. They, they tease the idea of what's going to happen. Then they do a close up on his face and he's like, nope, 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 uh, -uh nope, nope, not. <laughs> so kind of give him that little grunt with the no, uh, uh, it's not happening. And that's, that's, that's my reference for pegging. 
Are yeah, you, I'm not. I, that's a uh, vulnerable. It's the whole thing is a vulnerable space for either. Yeah, side. And, and it's not just. I mean, you you can look at that the same way for both sides. I mean, there's got to be a lot of trust. Uh, even if it's a man performing anal sex on a woman, there's a lot of trust there because uh-huh. there's a lot of things can go wrong. Yeah, um, there's absolutely. People who have died due to perforated colons because of having rough anal sex. So there's a, there's a lot of things. And if it's something you're going to do or you're going to try, educate yourself first. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, go to a sex shop where they have someone working behind the counter who is who is knowledgeable on those types of things. Talk mm. to them. Let them educate you. Or if that's a little too embarrassing, go to Google. But, you yeah. Can find something on Google. Yeah. But there is an alternative if you don't want to, you know, and that is on the outside. I mean, you can you can do it on the outside. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, well, I mean, you don't have to go so far as being, you don't have to be so invasive to reach, you know, the P spot for men. It'd be the spot between, you know, the perineum. Yeah. So you can go on the outside in between those two spots and massage there. Right. Yeah. You're not going to get the same effect as far as I know, but uh, that's. Yeah. But that that spot right there alone, though, just a slight touch could get you to jump and, and kind of create that. So that there's an erogenous zone right there that they missed. And the other one that I wanted to bring up is the ribs, you know, right along the ribs where the obliques are. That is a spot on pretty much 90 percent of men out there. If a woman runs her fingernails down the obliques, it'll done. Done deal. He's ready to rock. And really? roll. Oh, yeah. Huh. It's it's just one of those it's one of those spots. It's like put it this way: when it, it's like she's got to put her hands on your body. There's the most skin contact without being body to body. So it's there's there's a lot of um, there's a lot of heat in your hands. Yeah. Right. So when you touch that spot, like when he's taking his shirt off and you touch that spot on his body, that that is a spot that's it's it's primed to be warm and, and just boom let's jump onto this you know it's, it's that. that's a spot i never th- yeah janet just like you i didn't i never thought about that i yeah never thought about that at all i mean i'm not talking about the ribs like right up underneath his chest i'm talking about down on the side on the, down the sides the lower, yeah lower part of the ribs yeah yeah huh crazy i know huh <laughs> see and that's why this is good and i think yeah we just tend to kind of go just rush over it and just think oh yeah there is just that one area and that's it but you know that's the thing that's what this is about that's what this that's why we're doing this is to you know think about it ladies like try something out try one of these things whatever you know if, just you know, try it, one and see see if things are different and and see if it uh, if he notices like oh she's doing something to, see if that you know a little thing like that could just like totally change one one time one night together right so and and if it does and it leads to something great like great then we've achieved our purpose here. You know, and ladies, if you're, you're you're wanting to hint, you want to send a little bit more direct message without being direct. There's there's those there's three things that you can really do. Two of them list, uh, or one of them on the list. Two of them not on the list. But uh, like the sacrum area, sacrum area behind his back. If you say he's out doing something, working on working on the car, or mowing the grass, or whatever, and he comes up, gets a drink of water or something. Just put your hand there. Don't do anything. Just put your hand in that spot. Hmm. It'll start. It, it'll uh, start a chemical change in his mind. And next thing you know, he'll be starting to think. You know, you'll start warming him up. It's the same thing with women. You know, women talk about this all the time. Like the, the slow, long play. You don't have to just jump right into sex. You can play it out. You can drop those hints all day long. Uh-huh. And women think 
oh man, it would be so great if my husband or my boyfriend would do this and just stretch this thing out. And by the time we get ready, we're just like totally into each other. Like works both ways. So think about that. He, maybe he's washing his hands in the sink. You go up behind him and you just rub your hands along the, the obliques from behind. Mm -hmm. um, boom, right there. Or maybe you're driving home and you reach behind his hair and neck. You start playing with the hair at the back of his neck. I do that all the time. Yeah, that I do that, that. That's okay. So that one there, there, there's a psychological connection. And I know this is going to sound kind of strange, but there's a psychological connection between mothers and sons. And that's why men like that feeling so much is because it's a soothing, comforting feeling comforting because their mothers used to do that to us when we were children. Yeah. Well, that carries on. What, but when our, but as we get older, that turns into, it gives a different meaning. Now it's comforting, yes, but it's also kind of has that erogenous effect. So, you know, behind the hair, the obliques, you know, those, those two areas. Lower right, back. Lower back. Those, those two areas, those three areas. That is, if you want to send some messages, just try it. Well, I think, just, and you know what? I think it's very similar to us. And I think. Yeah, I think that could lead to a whole different scenario. And I think so many times things become stale and stagnant and, um, you know, the same. You get into that routine. And if you just do one of those things and he'll go, whoa, that's different. And then that might make him do something different. And then, oh, my God, you've got a party happening that's all totally different. And it's like, wow. And you get this renewed sense of closeness and togetherness and intimacy right so but i think a lot of them are the same for both of us lower back i mean there's some i think we have more but yeah. you know it's like um most people's sex lives they start deteriorating when they start feeling that it's routine uh once it becomes routine it's like okay here we go now let's get this done let's just do what we do mm -hmm. um, in the moment just in do the what moment, we do like awesome in the moment it's great you don't ever want to stop you want to do it again as soon as you can but then you kind of hit that spot where it's like okay you're done going to sleep boom done whatever yeah and then it may be say a couple weeks a couple months whatever it is before the next session it's not because you don't want it it's just because well it's the routine of it you, you just you're just tired of the routine of getting to that spot or that point yeah yeah, because think back in the beginning. Boy, it wasn't work, was it? No, no. It, it was wasn't. like, do this, do that, try this. But then in the beginning, it was mainly him probably instigating it. Um, maybe not all the time, but, uh, but for the most part, it was probably him instigating something. Um, this is a way to flip that around a little bit. Uh, mm. be, take, the, take the role. It's not meaning that you're being more aggressive. It doesn't mean anything. It just means that, hey, you've got need. You want met? Let's. Let's let him know that we need mm -hmm. to have met. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, yeah. Yeah. And I, it's very interesting and it's, yeah, it's definitely, um, you know, it's just one of these, this topic was just definitely one of those things that it was honestly like, I never put a lot of thought into there's more than just the money shot. <laughs> I think a lot of people believe it's all about the money shot, but it really isn't. Yeah, um, that there's more that there's it, and I think it definitely adds to that intimate, that intimate aspect, and it could help change things and make things a little bit different. Absolutely. I mean, why the hell else would all these women buy that friggin' Fifty Shades of Grey when it came out? It was like the biggest thing ever and the okay. movies and more books and all that if women didn't. So, you know, this one little thing, one little thing you could try out of these could like, I'm not saying it's going to lead to that, but still. Um, Unless he's just getting out of the shower and you're playing with just that. Uh, it if you're playing with that fernium or phalerum, whatever the hell it's called, the F pot, trust me, it's on. It's yeah. just that just game over. It's on. Yeah. So comment what's your thoughts on ice cubes? I spend 10 months of my life freezing cold and I hate it. I don't want ice cubes. So that's my thought on ice cubes. Now, if it was summertime, 
It's a whole different story. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Uh, ice cubes aren't really that big of a deal. But it's not a big, you know, I mean, I, it's not like I'd say, no, absolutely not. But it's not something I would go to because I'm always cold and I hate it. It makes me cranky. So it, put it this way. If, if you're trying to get me in the mood and you take an ice cube and shove it down my pants, not going to happen. <laughs> I don't think that would be. But ice cubes, no, I'm not talking about you. I mean, not you personally. Me, no, I'm talking about. No, I know, but I don't think, I don't, I don't think that anybody would do that. But uh, that's what we we're talking about though. Roger, so ice cubes are more of a foreplay kind of a yeah. play thing. Um, if you want to go that route, go for it. If not, yeah, don't do it. Like you, I live in an area that likes to stay cold for long periods of time. So I would rather not play with cold unless, yeah. well, unless I it's like, it. like, a, <laughs> unless it's like, uh, you know, like a fudge pop where you can have fun licking the chocolate off. Oh you know. God. Don't say fudge pop. Like that does not fit with anything that we freaking talked about. <laughs> well, it depends. It could it could fit with Peggy. <laughs> it's getting, we're degrading this the content here. So I know, but you know what? The, the childishness always comes out when you when you hit this topic always and it doesn't matter how old anybody is no no because it's, it's just fun. one of those things that makes you laugh See, and that's the thing i mean everybody loves it everybody and the loves point it. is you should have fun that is the point people talk about sex more than they're willing to admit they talk about sex yep. so you know the thing is we come out here, we're sharing these things with you. We're not telling you that this is the end all be all. There's probably a million other erogenous zones that we don't know about, or maybe we do know about, we just don't have a name for them. So that's, that's my challenge to y'all. If you decide that you <laughs> come up with a few other erogenous zones that maybe you've tried out and like, Oh, Hey, that's one that he likes. Share them, share them out, share them on our page. Uh, we love it when people share stuff on our page, especially when it's something that adds to a conversation we had. Who knows? Maybe we it'll give us enough uh, for us to think about where we can come back around, revisit it at some point, so we can add to the conversation. Yeah, perfectly said. You just made us all grown up again. Look at that. Mm. Absolutely. The, it, this was really just, it, as every conversation, it's about just putting it out there. Something to think about. We're just sharing some information, and we want you guys to add to the conversation. Share what you've tried or what you thought or what someone else tried or whatever or something just for you to think about think more about it like for me it was like yeah I never thought about that actually so thank you to Alin to our assistant grit and grace assistant for bringing that up to us actually as an idea this is why we have her because she's fabulous with her graphics and and her ideas so yeah that made me go hmm yeah I never thought about that you just just one of those things. Poor guys. We just leave you out of these things, don't we? It's always it's always about the women. But yeah, I never thought about it. So I'm sure that means someone else hasn't really thought about it either. So try it out. Like, think about it. Try one thing. Share something that you do that maybe it works like a hot damn for you and someone else can try. So again, yeah, that's why we bring this here. It's always just to think about it. Put it on, on the, put it on the table. Just put it out there. Who knows? That's right. That's right. So, folks, thank you all for joining us this evening. It's been a lot of fun, uh, and I'll be honest with you, uh, we've been we've been looking for something to talk about. We've covered other sex topics in the past, and it's felt like we were kind of getting to a point where we're circling around some of that stuff. This was a way for us to be able to kind of break that mold and go a different direction. So if you like these types of conversations, if you, if you want to know more, please, you got to let us know, go on over to grit and grace TV.com and leave us a comment. Uh, you can do it anonymously or you can do it and leave your name on it. Either way, it sends us an email 
And if you want to do it anonymously, we don't know. We really don't get yeah. that information. So that's right. So if you want to suggest a topic, maybe that you'd like, you know, you are dying for some info on or ideas or opinions or whatever, but you want us to start the conversation and you want to see what other people say, um, you know, suggest it to us, suggest it to us, like go to our website and suggest it to us and we'll, uh, we'll put it out there for sure. Um, we are going to be coming live to near the end of June. We were hoping for, I think the 28th, that is a Thursday night show date for us, for me to be live. Um, doing our show together in the same spot live. So we're going to give you more information as that comes, as we get closer to that. CG's working on details, but um, yeah. yeah we, I'm excited uh, for summer to come. Live together, side by side in the same spot. I'm yeah. so excited for this. I'm so very excited for this. And uh, we're going to have a live audience. Uh, not just on the computer, but also in front of us. They will be there interacting with us right on the spot. So if you live in the Rapid City area, yeah, you can do that. You can actually join us and be live right there with us. If you have a comment, I'll turn the microphone around and you can give your comment right there live for everybody to hear. So Yeah. And yeah. if you have a business, it's your chance to get a little bit of exposure for your business. If you're going to be there live, definitely come party with us. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be a rocking good time. So stay, stay peeled to the Grit and Grace Facebook page for that information. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for sharing your Friday night with us. We know Friday nights, people are usually busy, but we couldn't last night. So yeah, Friday night. Have a great weekend, everybody. So until next week, thank you very much, and we'll be seeing you. Bye. Try something new. Go try something new tonight. I really hope my wife didn't hear us talking about pegging. That's not the new that I want to try. <laughs> not at all. No, friend. No.